What's up guys, my name's Brandon and I've covered hundreds of iOS 17 features and changes, but in this video, I'm gonna show you my top 17 favorite iOS 17 features so far. So let's kick things off with number one, and that is auto-deleting two-factor authentication codes. So this is a feature that you really don't realize how useful it is until you've used the software for months, like multiple months. So if you go into your settings here and then go down to passwords and then into password options, at the bottom here under verification codes, we have clean up automatically. And what this does is it automatically deletes your two-factor authentication codes as long as you use autofill. So you have to tap on the little autofill right there with the code so it autofills it in in order for these to be deleted. Otherwise, they will stay there. That is one thing I've learned after using this. And the good thing is these go automatically into your recently deleted. So they are deleted, but you still can recover them if you need to. They will be in your, if you go to your messages here and then go to recently deleted, they will show up right here if you wanted to recover those for some reason. My next favorite feature in iOS 17 so far has to be the music application. This is kind of a combination of features here, but the music application overall has multiple features that I use on a daily basis number one I mean take a look at the cover art there the animated cover art looks so awesome on the now playing screen we do also have the credits right here where you can view the credits of everybody behind the song I wish I was there for albums but it's not we have the mini player down at the bottom now we also have crossfade so if we go into our settings and then to music down here we have crossfade if you turn that on you can change the crossfade from one second up to 12 seconds I have mine set at seven seconds I find that to be a good medium there my next favorite feature has to be searching within messages so I've always wanted to be able to search for messages in a specific conversation whether that be a group chat whether that be with an individual now we can do that so if you type out the name of the person or the name of the group chat and then you go right here messages with and then tap on that it will do this right here where it kind of grays out that person's name up top it categorizes it by that conversation name and now if i search for hi for example you can see it shows all the times that hi was said in messages to brandon butch in this example or it would be the same if you had a group chat up there it would show every time hi was said in a certain group chat my next favorite feature or i guess features are the upgrades to predictive text and also to autocorrect so now autocorrect will not correct you know what to ducking so that's no longer an issue also if i type out something like with two of the last letter you can see it auto corrects right there but if i tap on that auto correct i can easily go back to the word that it was previously with that little back arrow right there so all i have to do is simply tap on that and there we go it changes it back it's much easier when your iphone auto corrects something to go back to what you typed originally and then predictive text is something else that has gotten really good but it doesn't show up in every instance like you have to use your phone a lot your phone has to learn how you type but predictive text can be pretty good at predicting what you want to type next I cannot get it to work right here because I haven't really said much in this conversation, but it does get better with time. And I've really enjoyed that on my main device, especially where I type a lot and it's learned a lot from my typing behaviors. The next thing I want to talk about is in the photos application, more specifically when editing or marking up a photo. So for example, if I zoom in, we have the crop that shows up there in the top right for easy cropping. And if you tap and hold on that crop button, you get the option to change the aspect ratio very quickly if you would like to. But what I really like the most here is if you tap on edit and then go into the markup up here in the top right and then I add a shape so we'll just say you know or, or let's just do add a shape we'll do add an arrow if I wanted to point to something before in iOS 16 it was really hard to maneuver that arrow around I would always get it wrapped up but now we have these little three dots to the right of that and if you use that you could actually move this very easily so I didn't touch it right there let me go back and try that again it's still not the best here the UI is still not the best but if you take that little blue right there you can move it around much easier as you can see and you did also see that pop-up right there which allows you to cut copy duplicate and delete very easily as well so it's just much easier to maneuver around with the arrows now they also have these little you know they kind of slap into place there they kind of just you know snap into place right there whereas before it was kind of just a free-for-all and it would move around you know in all kinds of ways and make really funky looking arrows so I found that to be much better when you want to point out to something also down here in the bottom you can see that the color you know changing the arrow type 
is very easy. You even have the points. If you wanted to make it thicker or thinner on the fly, you can do that right there. Just the whole markup process is so much better in iOS 17. Oh, and one other thing I want to mention too, is if you add a shape and then add like the rectangle right here and then double tap on that, you could easily add text there as well. My next favorite feature are the interactive widgets on the home screen. So you can see that we have the music right there. I can play or pause straight from the home screen without needing to go into the music application. We have things like the podcast right there. You can see all of my podcasts. I can easily play those right there if I want to. And one of my favorite ones, especially on the HomePod, has to do with home. So if I go ahead and add a home widget here, we'll just add the accessories and you will see that I can turn off this Nano Leaf right behind me. Watch this straight from my lock screen. I tap on that. It turns it off right behind me. I don't have to go into the home application or use Siri. I can do that. And same with my AC. I can tap right here. It does take me into the home application but it takes me straight to you know adjusting that AC without having to search for it in the home app which is really nice. My next favorite feature is the ability to undo when moving widgets or applications on the home screen. So I've only had this happen a couple of times where I accidentally move an application or a widget but let me show you for example so if I move the sleep widget you know over here way over onto this page and I didn't mean to do that if I just shake right here to undo it says undo move widget and now you can tap on undo and we'll put it right back to where it just was and again this applies to applications as well so if i move youtube you know if i accidentally go way over here and i move it you know into a folder inside of notes i don't want that that looks terrible so i can shake it right here and it will undo that it will take it out of that folder and put it back to where it was so that feature is small but very handy in the situations where you need it my next favorite feature are the wind maps in the weather application so if we go into weather which looks beautiful as always here on ios 17 especially at night when we have the full moon showing right there if we tap on the maps in the bottom left hand corner and then go to the layers in the top right and then to wind that is a new layer in ios 17 that shows you the wind speed not just for your location but you can see i can see further down in orlando tampa i can see their current wind speed and it shows the direction right there so it's moving east northeast at nine miles per hour. And then up here in the top left, you can see kind of a you know guide for the wind speeds based on the color. It's kind of like a legend up there. And if we tap on these three dots right here, you can see even more precise details. So you can see the wind gusts as well for all of the locations that you have saved in your weather. So you can see Brisbane, Toronto, New York, those are all showing because if I go out of here and then go to these three dots to see all the cities I have saved, it shows the wind speeds for all the cities that I have saved right here. My next favorite feature is one of everybody's favorite features in iOS 17, but I couldn't make this video without mentioning it, and that is standby mode. This feature is awesome. I use it every single day to just have a quick and easy look at the time and also for notifications right there. It's just laid out so well. And if you go into the settings for standby, you can turn notifications off, or what I like doing is having notifications on and then having show preview on tap only enabled as well. That way you can only see the preview of that notification the context of that notification if you tap on the screen this is great for not distracting you unless you are able to look at your screen and look at that notification so standby mode just in general awesome feature my next favorite feature has to do with focus modes which I use every single day and if you go into settings and then focus and then into my recording a video focus mode and then into options Right here under silence notifications, you can now only silence notifications when your device is locked. So if you have it set to always, which I believe is the default, you will not get notifications when your device is unlocked and you're actively using it. But if you switch this to while locked, that means that you will get notifications if you happen to get on your phone and somebody sends you a notification or if you get a phone call at the time, that will come through, but they will cease, they will stop once you lock your device. That way, you know, you're trying to focus when your device is locked. So it's gonna silence those notifications. I just find this to be super useful and you should definitely check it out if you use focus modes. The next feature, is another one that I could not make a video on the top iOS 17 features without mentioning and that is name drop and airdrop so this has gotten so much better with iOS 17 because all you have to do now is put two devices close together that are on iOS 17 it will transfer the contact information along with the contact poster which we'll talk about in a moment along with if you want to transfer a photo or video if you want to transfer any file with another person now all you need to do is bring two devices close together you will see an animation and that 
that transfer will happen. But I will say, if you have more than one iOS 17 device, I would highly recommend going into your settings and then going into the general section and then to AirDrop and turn off Start Sharing by bringing devices together. Turn that off if you don't wanna drive yourself crazy having your devices always try to transfer something to the other, whether that be a contact or a file, I would just turn that off. But if you don't have more than one iOS 17 device, keep that on because it will be a cool feature when you're out in public and you wanna transfer information with another person or if you wanna transfer files with another person, you'll no longer need to tap on AirDrop. You can just hold your devices close together. Now, of course, for the name drop feature, I know a lot of people are concerned that, oh, well, can't a random person just go up and get your phone number? No, you need to confirm it. So even if you know the person, if you put your phone up to them to get you know, their phone number, to exchange phone numbers, the other person will need to accept it before it goes through. And speaking of contact posters, if you go into the phone application and tap on edit up in the top left and then go to your name and photo, this is where you can edit your contact poster, which is a new feature in iOS 17. And this is going to show when somebody is calling you or if you're calling somebody else. So you're going to see their contact poster, which they can create. So you no longer need to have, you know, a picture for each contact. You still can, but it's nice now that you yourself can personalize how you look on another person's phone instead of what they set. Of course, they can always override that, like I said, but this is a great way to do that. If you tap on edit right here, you can customize it with your own photo. You can do a Memoji. You can see my photo is right here. That's what it will look like when I'm calling another person if they are on iOS 17. So this is a really awesome feature. You just tap on customize and then that's how you can choose your contact photo and then also your contact poster. My next favorite feature is a controversial one because this feature has a lot of potential, but right now it's confusing a lot of people and that is live voicemail. So what this does is it gives you a live transcript of what the person on the other line is saying in real time. Like as they're leaving you a voicemail, you can see on your lock screen what they are saying and you even get the option to pick up while they are leaving that voicemail. But the, the confusion here is that on the other line, when you do not pick up, the other person hears, you know, you, the other person can still pick up the phone, you know? So basically it's saying the other person can hear you, they can still pick up. So what I found is that a lot of people when I call or when they call me rather, and I don't answer, they hear, you know, from my voicemail that I could still pick up. So what happens is they'll sit there just waiting. I'll get like a, a minute long voicemails of people just sitting there waiting on the other line because they heard that I could still pick up. So it's kind of confusing for some people right now. So I would, you know, strongly consider setting up a custom greeting. That way the other person on the other line isn't as confused. But I think the feature in general is great. I think it is a really awesome feature. I've actually used it multiple times when I can't get to the phone in time. The other person hears that I could still pick up or they're leaving a voicemail and I'm able to answer it once I see they're saying something important and then talk to them in real time, you know, just like a regular phone call. My next favorite feature is offline maps. And this is a boring feature on the surface, but Hear me out. So if you tap on your profile picture in the top right and then go to offline maps, you can see it says, first off, we have a suggested map. So it uses your current location to suggest a map to download of your surrounding area. But if you tap on download new map, I now get this little square here where I can customize, you know, what I want to be downloaded. So let's say I'm going to Riverside, for example, I'll pull over here on Riverside and I'll have exactly what I need, you know, downloaded. Maybe I'll go up a little bit. Maybe if I want to go into the mountains where I may not have signal, I can put it up there. That way all of that is downloaded and I won't need to rely on cell connectivity. Now at the bottom, it shows that the size of the selected map will be about 500 and 80 megabytes and it does also say that updates will be downloaded automatically so if a street name gets changed or you know if a road gets closed it will update that you know updated version of the maps automatically in the background so if you tap on download it will download that and you can also download multiple locations it's not just limited to one location so offline maps super useful especially if you're you know going somewhere where you might have weak cell connection. My next favorite feature has to do with private browsing in Safari. So if you go to Safari and then go to the private tab, you will notice that private browsing is locked. And I love this feature because if you want to keep certain things, you know, hidden from anybody who just gets your phone, you can lock your private browsing. And if you tap on unlock, it will use face ID. And now we can see everything that I have here in my private tab. But if we go out of Safari and then, you know, back to the public and then back over to private, it still keeps it there. So it doesn't ask you for a 
password every single time. But if I were to lock my device and then go back into it, it would prompt me for that face ID again. Now, another feature I like about this is if you go into settings and then to Safari and then go down, you will notice that we can change the default search engine for the private tab as well. My next favorite feature in iOS 17 is something that we should have had in iOS 7, but I'm not complaining. I'm happy that it's finally here. And that is the ability to set multiple timers in the clock application. I know, I know, basic feature. Android's had it for 10 years, I don't care. It's a great feature to have here in iOS 17. If we tap on start, you can see we have a timer. Let's tap on the plus right there and set another one for two minutes. There we go, we have multiples going at the same time. You can see them up here in the dynamic island. You can only see one at a time. But if we go to our lock screen right here, you will see multiples if you tap on it, you can see all of your timers at the same time. And also what's even better is if you go into the control center here and haptic press on the timer, you will see that we have a plus to the right of that where we can set another timer right there. So if I wanna set this, and we'll tap on the plus, it takes us right to this section. I wish it did it straight from control center, but it's not that good yet. If we tap on four minutes, we can have another one going right there. And if I want to end them, I can just swipe over to delete and they're gone just like so. Next up, let's talk about spotlight search because spotlight search is also much better here in iOS 17, more specifically with accessing system settings and system menus. Like if I type in Bluetooth, for example, you can see if I start typing it, it automatically gets me to Bluetooth. If I tap on that, it takes me straight into Bluetooth. And if I type alarm, for example, take a look up top where it says clock. Next to that, we have set timer and add alarm. There's little shortcuts to go a little bit deeper into the application now. Same with these shortcuts right here. We could set our alarm for these various times straight from the spotlight search without having to go into the clock application. And you could also run shortcuts straight from spotlight as well without having to go into this, the shortcuts application. And then my final favorite feature in iOS 17 so far has to do with AirPods. So if you pull out your AirPods and go into their settings, you will notice that we have a new section here for mute and unmute. So you can now use your AirPods with a single tap, or if you wanna set it to a double tap, you can do that. You can now mute and unmute yourself while on FaceTime calls, while on phone calls, while on Zoom meetings. And I didn't really use this at first. I actually accidentally did it at one point, And then I realized how useful this is to mute yourself. So I just find this feature to be pretty overlooked by a lot of people. And I think it's awesome if you use your AirPods while on calls at all. So those are 17 of my favorite iOS 17 features so far. Again, I'm sure more features will be added in 17.1, 17.2, and future versions of iOS 17. But for now, that's where we're at. I will make an updated video once later versions of iOS 17 come out and talk about some additional features that I've been loving. But if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for a lot more iOS 17 coverage. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.